I, I was uh, very apprehensive in the first day, and, and it, if somebody had told me uh, what the reality of it was, I wouldn't have been as, a, as apprehensive. Everybody around me is trying to do the best thing for me, and that they're on my side. You, you will get through it, and you can get through it, and it's, uh, you know, nothing that you can't overcome. I find one of the best ways for a person to feel more confident and less anxious about their treatment is to really have some good information about what to expect. Many people don't have much experience with chemotherapy and it's hard to imagine exactly what would happen on the day that they get their treatment. Chemotherapies are drugs used to treat cancer and they're often given intravenously. Unlike surgery or radiation that target one area in the body, chemotherapy goes through the bloodstream and can kill cancer cells anywhere in the body. For the first time, you can read on what's going on, but it's very different when you get here. The nurses are here, the support is here. Try to rest before treatment, eat in the morning as you would, take your medications, try to do your routines. The patient care assistant will take your vital signs, your blood pressure, your height and your weight, which um, we do every time that you're here for treatment. We would start an IV. Sometimes it would be a regular IV in the arm. Sometimes people have a device um, that we use uh, called a Mediport uh, to administer the treatment. Uh, we would draw some blood to check and be sure the blood counts are okay and, and that other blood tests are all right to begin treatment. We send it to the lab. The lab is right on site and then we always look at your blood work first, then we order your medication. Sometimes you would see the doctor or the, and or the nurse on the same day. And then um, we would begin a series of intravenous treatments to prevent side effects, followed by the chemotherapy itself. The length of time all of that takes varies from person to person and, and depending on the type of treatment you're getting. Um, but usually it would be anywhere from about two hours to the better part of a day. We do have a television with different channels um, that they can occupy themselves with at the moment. We have magazines or they can bring a book to read, they can bring a Kindle to read. There's also a lot of patients, they choose because the night before they're not sleeping a lot, the chairs are reclined and they get comfy, they can also close their eyes and we will still take care of them, that's not a problem um, to worry about. Uh, also, a family member is always a good idea um, if someone is able to come with you to have, to just pass the time. A lot of patients, it goes by faster when they have someone sitting there just talking and the time just goes by a little quicker for them in that sense. Some patients expect maybe bolts of lightning or something or shock waves, something to go through them. They've heard so many things from other people and so I reassure them that maybe it's going to be rather anticlimactic. You're not going to feel anything except cold fluids going into you. You might feel drowsy because you'll get some Benadryl as pre-meds but for the most part, you're not going to feel like someone is shocking you, hurting you, anything like that. I, I thought that there would be um, a, you know, a further pain that uh, I, I never experienced. The, um, the, the pain that I did feel was the after effects. The side effects of different chemotherapies vary and may not become apparent until several days after your treatment. Common side effects include nausea, vomiting, or fatigue. You may have some of these side effects or none at all. It's important to remember that we have a multidisciplinary team available for helping to manage all of the side effects of treatment. A lot of times when patients are going through chemotherapy treatment, it's easy to get caught up in, in what you have to do this week or you know, what are the side effects that I might have. But it's important to think about what we're trying to accomplish with, with the treatment. I had to learn how to relax. I was an extremely active person. Uh, one of the greatest difficulties I've had so far was learning how to rest, learning when to stop. And um, yeah, that was, that was my biggest problem throughout the entire thing. I got myself in trouble a lot of times not knowing when to stop and when to rest. Receiving a, a diagnosis of cancer and going through treatment can be very stressful. I think it helps people if they can stay positive as they go through their treatment, but it's also important to have a good understanding and of 
their diagnosis and of the treatment and to have reasonable expectations. Um, the other thing that's important is to know when to ask for help. Um, it's normal to feel depressed and anxious as you're going through treatment, and there are things that we can do to help um, with these feelings as, as you're going through the treatment. I would say someone who's going to treatment, someone who's going to treatment right now, to have a positive attitude, to believe and be willing to fight, not to lay down and say, oh, I have cancer, I'm going to die. Be willing to fight. Uh, just sit tight and, and go for the ride. It's going to be a rough and bumpy ride, but at the end of it, you will be uh, in a better place. Just believe. Believe that you can be treated. Believe that treatment is possible and recovery is possible and you can get better. Just don't give up. Just go in wholeheartedly and don't give up and continue to fight.